Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, thank you for being here. And thank you for, to the local organization committee and the committee in general for this invitation. It's a pleasure for me to present this job um, called um, Gender Labor Earnings Gap in Costa Rica over the last decade, what drives it and the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as you may see uh, in the title, uh, this uh, work has two parts. One is measuring the gender pay gap during a decade and the decomposition, identifying the main um, determinants of this gap. And the other part is related with the eff effect of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. This uh, work is, um, was conducted w with three more colleagues who are uh, in Costa Rica and in the Work Inequality Lab in Paris, France. Okay, uh, regarding the motivation and contribution, as you may know, uh, gender pay gap is a reality in the entire world. According to the um, last report of the um, ILO, there is a gender gap of 22%. The, the salaries, the pay is 22% higher for men than for women. There is vast literature uh, assessing this gender pay gap in developed countries, but it is really scarce in uh, developing countries. It's scarce and at the same time, there are um, least literature analyzing inequality between groups. There are more literature analyzing inequality in the entire nation, but not uh, between groups. Uh, most of this literature is concentrated in countries with largest populations, like India or China, are more based in cross-sectional data. Uh, there is also more literature using uh, traditional models like I Minserian mean, earning functions and decomposition methods. And also, um, despite GDP, GPG gender pay gap has been decreasing. As you may see, uh, it remains in favor of men in the entire world. Um, as part of the motivation, uh, there is a concern about the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic in gaps in general, in socioeconomic gaps. But definitely one of the main concerns or one important concerns is about gender labor gaps. Uh, specifically in my country, we have uh, a problem, a, shock, a structural problem, uh, because women, uh, women have less access and less pay than men. Uh, and it has been a situation um, repeatedly during the last uh, two, two de decades with no solution. Uh, there are previous studies doing this kind of studies, uh, analyzing uh, the, the effect of the COVID-19 pandemics. One of them is in India with um, an OLS model, and they do an analysis pre and post uh, pandemic, and they analyze the differences. Uh, there is another um, study, uh, recent study, analyzing uh, this gender pay gap, doing micro simulations based on a uh, previous uh, data set they have, like three, two, two to three years previous uh, the pandemic. When, what is the contribution of this uh, work? First of all, we are um, adding new literature to the measure and the decomposition of the gender pay gap in developing countries by using a large scale data set uh, in a decade, in a decade, and using a vast uh, set of human capital and job uh, related uh, predictors. We have a really good data set, it's a survey, um, uh, as you may see in the next um, slides, and we have uh, fortunately uh, good controls to conduct this, this research. And to the best of our knowledge, for the first time, uh, we use uh, panel, uh, panel data to estimate 
try to estimate <laughs> the, uh, the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic in the gender pay gap. Um, definitely is good for you. Uh, also, it was really good for us to study the context. What is the context, uh, not just in the pandemic um, crisis, also during the period of analysis. What, what have been, what is the, the evolution of the market and what is the evolution specifically in the differences between men and women? As you know, in the majority of countries uh, around the world, the pandemic produced a truly a difficult situa situation. Um, one of, of these situations definitely is the uh, decrease in the production, especially in some specific activities, which depends entirely from, um, for example, tourism, which is an activity uh, which depends on the on abroad uh, tourism. Also, uh, another activity is like uh, commerce and transportation and storage, which uh, are activities who was who were really affected because of the lockdowns we faced. Sorry, uh, you may see also. This is just informative, the first part, maybe the most important part is this the decrease and during the COVID-19 pandemic, similarly maybe to most of your countries. And this is more specific to the labor market in Costa Rica. Our country has been facing definitely um, different structural problems. One of them is the unemployment rate, uh, another one is the underemployment, the rate of informality, and also um, differences in participation. Not, a, not the optimal participation, yeah, uh, like the natural rate and unemployment, definitely. And maybe the most important problem is the differences between groups. We are talking about women, youth people, people who live in rural areas, people who are employed in uh, occupations with um, lower levels of skills, etc. And this is really important for us because most of these uh, variables we have to take into account to understand the results we obtain. What about the data? As I said before, we have a cross-sectional data set from 2010 to 2020. This is around 1 million observations. And our, our final sample of 300,000 observations. Also, as you, as you want to measure the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, we took advantage of a, of a panel data set we have during uh, this period, 2020, 20. 21, specifically the first quarter, quarter of 2021. With uh, 100,000 observations, 140,000 observations, and our final um, sample of 40,000 observations. As you may see, most of these observations are concentrated in men, not in women. And as you can imagine, this is because our um, dependent variables is uh, salaries. And this is the people who is into the labor market. And in Costa Rica, as you see, before there is an important gap in the entrance to the uh, labor market. Because of this, there are more men than women. Oh, sorry. Well, uh, about the empirical strategy, we use also two different measures, uh, two different um, empirical strategies, but related. Because the, the first we use is the uh, Oaxaca blinder decomposition, which is, as the majority of you know, uh, well-known uh, decomposition method to analyze um, gaps between socioeconomic groups. 
And also we um, make a correction using the, the Heckman correction bias term, which corrects for the characteristics which influence the entrance into the labor markets between the groups of analysis. Uh, regarding the uh, main predictors we use, which is this component, the Z, uh, we use um, some of the predictors uh, already the colleagues explained, like the uh, skills, skill levels, we use occupations, we use um, if, the, if the person works in a public or private sector, uh, we use the traditional uh, Minserian function uh, predictors, education or schooling. Uh, we use experience, tenure. And we also use another particular um, predictors for our uh, country, which is the difference if a person is working full-time or part-time is important, particularly in our uh, labor market. We use another controls also, like if the person lives in a rural or uh, urban area, etc. And regarding the second method we use, is an extension of the Oaxaca blinder decomposition. It's a really up-to-date um, command in 2021, around August, was released, and we take advantage of took advantage of this um, new command to because it is specialized in measuring uh, cross-sectional data, analyzing pre and post uh, event, and it also suitable to analyze uh, panel data sets. Because of this, we use uh, this method, which is almost the same that the Oaxaca uh, blinder decomposition method. But this method uh, adds this term, which interacts the group variable with time variable, specifically with the time zero or period zero in which we suppose is the chuck in this case, the declaration of the pandemic crisis. And we use another predictors of variables who affects uh, this relationship. Um, based on previous literature and also in the characteristics of our uh, labor market, we use if the person were working in a public or private sector on COVID sensitive or not uh, industries, uh, full or half time. And after that, we obtain the results for both parts. The analysis during the period um, of, during the decade, decade, and the part in which we analyze the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is more the um, equations properly. And you can see, uh, maybe just to put attention on the meaning of the, one, the Oaxaca blinder decomposition methods with um, the differences in the means between the salaries of men and women. Women is the base group. And then this method analyze which part of this different is explained and which part is unexplained. The explained part is related with the endowments or characteristics of the population. And the unexplained part, uh, there is a debate in literature, but it's more related with productivity and also with discrimination. There is a discussion, <laughs> but um, maybe both of them are important to explain or to, uh, yes, to explain the unexplained part. And related to the um, identification or the main, uh, yes, the main point of this uh, equation is that we suppose that group zero has the same characteristics of the group one and it is the same with the uh, endowments, uh, with the um, vectors, the vector of coefficients, which we su suppose exactly the same, trying to have like a, a counterfactual. Perfect. 
Regarding to the results, here we have the evolution of the estimated uh, earnings of uh, men and women, as you may see. There is a um, gap during all the period analyzed in favor of men. And uh, this is uh, of around 0 0.105 um, lock points, remembering that the hour dependent variables is the lock, um, uh, the logarithm of the salaries. Uh, yeah. And this is the, the, the results of the, the first part. We have a consistent uh, gender pay gap in favor of men. And in the second part, we have the results uh, regarding the, the effect of the COVID-19 pandemics. As you may see, and this is important uh, to mention, to highlight, uh, based on these results, there is a redu reduction on the gender pay gap during the COVID-19 pandemic. But not necessarily there are good news because most of the explanation behind these results is because the women who, who maintain in the, in the labor market were women with higher salaries. And all the women with less salaries were out of the, of the labor market. This is the explanation behind this result. And all this result is as, especially significant during the periods closer to the shock, to the initial shock, which is also um, unexpected result. Here there are some robustness checks we use. We compare the result of the, of the part of, uh, of the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic with the conventional Oaxaca blinder estimation. And uh, we also make some estimations uh, splitting our sample in a specific groups who, who may influence their results. Fortunately, we have uh, that these um, groups didn't affect uh, the, the results because their results were pretty similar. Yeah. And also we have, uh, sorry, pretty similar results using the Oaxaca blinder decomposition method, the traditional, which was a, a good news for us as well. Uh, regarding the conclusion and discussion, um, definitely this kind of works contributes to literature, especially for developing countries and also for public policy, because in Costa Rica, during the last, I don't know, maybe five years, we are talking about the bridging of the gender pay gap, but using the data uh, not necessarily corrected for controls, who change completely the results. At the beginning, we have the same results, but then correcting for the, the predictors, the necessary controls, we have the reality. And maybe this reality is underestimated, because as I explained before, the, most, the more vulnerable people in the labor market in Costa Rica during the pandemic were women or youth, or youth people. Also, um, it is important to understand that this is not the final. We have to analyze more in depth what happened later. We have more data and we are conducting new analysis, trying to understand if this uh, bridging of the uh, gender pay gap was something uh, in a specific period. This is, our hypo this is our hypothesis. And then the gender pay gap returns to this sad situation, which is a uh, consistent gender pay gap. Just to finish, this phrase, I, I, I read this phrase last week, and I want to read for you. The gender pay gap is rooted in systemic inequalities. Equal pay is essential, not only for women, but to build a world of, digit, of dignity and justice for all. Equal pay for women and nothing less. Thank you.